know there's a lot to like about the state of Texas, especially if you're a sportsman. Now that state has always been known as a hotspot for whitetail and turkeys, but I think one of the best kept secrets in the hunting community is the exotics that are available in Texas. Now really an exotic, it's basically anything that's not native to Texas. And I'm talking about axis deer, black buck, uh, psycho deer, fallow deer, uh, rams, sheep, I mean even some of the African game are roaming free in Texas. And uh, you can buy a five-day uh, non-resident exotic license for $48. And it's just a fantastic destination. Um, it's terrain that uh, really you don't get to experience anywhere else. And in 2018, uh, my bu good buddy Keith Miller uh, let me know that he was actually opening an operation in Sutton County, Texas, which is part of the Hill Country. And uh, he invited me to come down and hunt with him. And to say I was excited really would be an understatement because... You know, the previous year's whitetail season here in New York was closed. You're still months away from the next season starting. But here's an opportunity to head south, take your bow, take a rifle, and hunt big game in Texas. Well, that first morning out, Keith and I were sitting in a blind overlooking a feeder. And really, from first light, um, we just had a parade of critters showing up. We had whitetail doe, psycho doe access dough and really just keeping us entertained all morning long and you know as the morning went on you're just having a good time and you know we've had having a few laughs and you know Keith was in the blind running the camera for me and um, as that morning wore on I caught movement off in the distance and lo and behold here is exactly what I'm looking for and I can tell you my heart skipped a beat when I saw this deer coming through the foliage. Well, fast forward from 2018 to 2021, it had been a couple of years since I've been down to Texas to hunt with Texas Trophy Whitetails. 
And uh, I had hunted with Keith up at his place in Livingston, Montana, Montana Whitetails, a few times. And uh, when he invited me back down, he said, you know, why don't you come down in March? It'll be about a month and a half earlier than when you were there last time. And uh, it'll be like a spring break. And I said, well, there you go. That's perfect. Redneck spring break, leaving the cold of western New York for the warmth of Texas, just so I can hunt. I'm in. And uh, jumped on a plane, headed down there. And uh, when I got to camp, um, you know, the excitement level was going through the roof. Now, the axis deer, they don't rut until uh, May and June, so I was there pre-rut. Um, but some of the animals were starting to come out of velvet, and uh, I'd be hunting some hard-horned axis. And the first morning we got into the blind, uh, we were hunting actually over the same, the same blind that I killed my deer in uh, back in 2018. And it was a fun morning. Uh, I had white-tailed doe and some uh, psycho doe come through, but really nothing that I wanted to take. So uh, the following day, um, Keith, looking through his trail cameras, was telling me, you know, with the temperature starting to rise, uh, these deer are starting to hit water sources more so than, than food uh, feeders. So he wanted to set us up over a water hole. And uh, problem was, uh, with this being a brand new property, didn't have a, a stand or a blind in place, so we had to go in with pruners. I went in with... with uh, Kate's brother Steve, and uh, we got into this thick scrub brush right next to uh, one of the water troughs and got on there with pruners and started cutting things free and, and making a little natural blind to set up in. And it was absolutely perfect. I mean, I could, I could sit in this blind, I was concealed, and I literally had this little bitty window to run the camera and shoot through. And the goal that second day with the warmer temperatures uh, was literally to sit all day, and I'm talking dark to dark. Um, now, I do that all the time here in New York during the rut, you know, in, in late October, early November, when you're sitting eight and a half, nine hours. Well, at the time of year and the place we were hunting, I was going to be sitting close to 13 hours. And uh, I made my mind up to do it. Well, there's no doubt that the plan was going to work because throughout the course of that day, I got visited by cows, turkeys, had a small access buck came in. We can just see that these animals were going to start hitting water, and I just needed to hang on and, and make it happen. And, um, you know, what was really cool is the number of turkeys that I saw while on this sit. I mean, there was one point in time when they were lined up around the water trough, and there really wasn't room for any more birds to get in there. And then they walked off, and two toms came in and sat there and drank at the water. So it really is a target-rich environment. Um, you know, then I had that small axis buck show up, and I just, just kept persevering. I mean, literally, you run out of things to think about on a sit like that. Um, and as I'm sitting it out and I'm waiting it out, and it's about a half an hour before legal shooting time ends, and I catch movement to my left, and again, you, I can't see a whole lot. Um, I'm only really seeing a window that's open to, the, to that water trough. I'm not seeing things coming in, and it's a challenge. So I happened to look up, and there he is. Well, you can imagine my dejection. You know, you sit 12 and a half hours waiting for that one opportunity. The opportunity presents itself. He was at 27 yards on the nose. I held the pin where I thought it needed to be. The shot felt good. He, he just came unglued. Um, and you can see he was, he was limping a little bit. He didn't want to put any weight in his right rear leg. Uh, but certainly that didn't help him from getting out of dodge after the shot. So it was a three-day hunt. The next day was going to be my last day, and uh, we made the decision that night to, to go out with a little bit of firepower. 
and uh, I was going to be hunting with, with Keith's brother, Steve, and uh, we were going to do a spot in stock. We took a 270, and um, really, we had parked the Ranger, um, hadn't walked 100 yards, and uh, Steve spotted a herd of access deer. I see the one right behind the one in Velvet. Chamber another round, you missed it. Right in front of, right in the open. No. Yeah, it was him. What's that? It was him. Yeah. I can't tell if I know. I can't keep it steady. <laughs> you talk about exciting. This is day three. Texas Trophy Whitetails, Sonora, Texas. I actually sat over a water hole yesterday, or water trough, for 12 hours, and I missed an absolute giant in the last half hour. So, Steve and I were talking last night, we said, you know what, let's break out the rifle, and do a little bit of spot and stalk. And we kind of drove the perimeter of the ranch, parked the machine, and we had walked 100 yards, and Steve spotted these deer. And he said, there's a great buck. And uh, we were able to sneak in on them, get set up and I think I hit him on the third shot um, it's unreal I just we got to go find this thing I know we got to give it a little bit of time but where else would you rather be? the 2020 deer season is a distant memory I'm six months away from hunting whitetails in the fall but yet here it is March 21st and I'm hunting big game only with Texas trophy whitetails so let's see if we can go find this big boy he looks like a great buck. Whew. Outstanding. <clears throat> He's laying right there. He probably didn't go 75, 80 yards from where we shot. And uh, let's go get our hands on this thing. He has a gorgeous ass as buck. Absolutely beautiful. It's like the best of both worlds. I mean, it really is. You look at the rack, and it really does it remind you of an elk. But yet, the body of a deer and some of the most delicious venison you could ever put your hands on. It's absolutely delicious. They're beautiful. And again, it's March. We're big game hunting with Texas Trophy Whitetails. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous buck. Can never get enough of it. Whew, get some pictures taken, get them gutted out. Maybe a little bit of barbecue tonight. Look at that. What more could you ask for? Mm -mm -mm.
Well, there's the second axis buck on the ground for me. It uh, was about an inch and a half bigger than the first deer that I took. And um, really, you know, hunting axis deer is, is the best of three worlds, really, for me. I mean, I, I enjoy elk hunting, and they've got that rack of an elk, the body of a deer. But just as importantly, it's probably the, the, the best tasting venison I've ever had. And filling the freezer with an axis deer is never a bad thing. And uh, we were able to get that thing back up and butchered up, and uh, we'll be enjoying that for some time. But, you know, when it comes to Texas Trophy whitetails, um, these guys are as professional as professional can be. Uh, the operation runs 12 months out of the year. I mean, you're hunting, you're hunting uh, turkey in the spring and whitetail in the fall, but the rest of the deer, the rest of the year, you can hunt hogs, you know, axis deer, psycho deer, fallow deer, uh, goats, rams, wild hogs. I mean, you name it. If you love to hunt, if you love to be in a blind, you love to be in a tree stand, you don't have to wait just for that, you know, that spring turkey season at home or that fall whitetail season at home. Um, you know, get in touch with the guys at Texas Trophy Whitetails, and you can really hunt big game all year round. Rifle, bow, crossbow, it doesn't matter. Hunt till your heart's content, and uh, hunt with some fantastic people. The meals are great, the lodging is fantastic, and uh, it's well worth the trip.